We recently talked about how AMD was gearing up to shake up the CPU market again, however it seems like Intel may have a killer CPU up their sleeve which will give the competition a good run for their money. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I love how competitive the CPU market is starting to get and that manufacturers are actually engaging in a price war now. If only every other market in the PC and tech space could be this competitive, then we'd be in such a better place right now, but I digress. We just talked about how AMD has drastically dropped prices for their existing Ryzen 7000 processors, in some cases nearly as much as 30% off of MSRP, and along with that, they're gearing up to release non-X variants, which will be cheaper and come with a cooler in the box that should help attract a lot more builders to the lineup. Raptor Lake and Alder Lake were some of the biggest contributors to AMD's Ryzen 7000 series doing poorly in sales, besides their own AM4 problems. This was because Intel was actually competing this time around. They have blazing fast processors when it comes to gaming. They're just as fast if not better in single core performance. In terms of multi-threading, they're doing extremely well in all segments because they offer more cores. And along with that, they still continue to have support for DDR4. Now, I've covered all of that in previous videos, so feel free to go over them if you're interested in that. But this leads me into the topic I wanted to go over for this video, which is covering Intel's non-K Raptor Lake 13th Gen processors. With every new generation of Intel processors, what they'll do is they'll release the K and KF SKUs first, as those CPUs are generally targeted towards the enthusiasts, hardware testers, and the PC gamer crowd. These are the SKUs which sell the most in the DIY space, and most of the tech press when it comes to a new generation will cover these processors a lot. Then after a few months, they'll release the non-K parts. These CPUs are still sold in the DIY space, but they're also sold to OEMs, but they do really well. One of the reasons why they seem like they don't get a lot of attention is because they're not overclockable and don't have the highest clock speeds out of the box, which means less performance, but the margins are typically negligible. And reviewers are often showing benchmarks how when you overclock and tune the CPU, you can get more performance out of the silicon. However, I think sometimes we just get too caught up in the hype. I mean, it can definitely be exciting to talk about a 13900K, you know, the Halo product that's boasting clock speeds north of 5.7 GHz, but you have to realize that the mainstream consumer isn't going to be rocking a CPU like this. Along with that, as thrilling as it can be to dabble into overclocking, most consumers don't. A lot of people I know just want a set it and forget it solution, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, especially these days when overclocking the CPU doesn't really net you as much performance as it used to as these chips are already pushed pretty hard out of the factory. So continuing on this tradition, Intel will be releasing more 13th gen processors down the road, which will be non-K variants, and what's nice about these parts is that they're quite a bit cheaper than the K SKUs, but still offer like 90-95% of the performance, which is ample for the vast majority of users. Now, one of the CPUs I wanted to focus on in particular was the i5-13400. The i5-X400 CPUs throughout the various generations Intel ever released are some of the best bang for the buck processors you can get. Last year when the 12400 hit the market, Hardware Unboxed did a review of it and found that on average, the 12400 was only behind the 12600K by like 9% and was about 6% slower than a 5600X when it came to 1080p gaming with a 6900 XT. And both of those processors at that time were retailing for considerably more. However, what makes the i5-13400 so special is that it will basically be a rebrand of the 12600K but sell for a significantly cheaper price when comparing their MSRPs. When the previous gen i5-12400F launched, it sold for about 180 US which I thought at that time was amazing value considering the 12600K went for about $300 US on Newegg when it came out. Now considering inflation and increased costs, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a price hike on the upcoming 13400. In fact, hardware leaker on Twitter Momomo posted a picture of what appears to be a listing from a US retailer, Shop BLT, for the 13400 and 13400F with the latter starting at $216. Now I'm personally more interested in the F variants because they are quite a bit cheaper since they don't have integrated graphics. In the budget and mainstream consumer space where the buyer is more strapped for cash, then this will be something to consider. And also, unless you have a specific need for integrated graphics like QuickSync, then I can't really see it being a problem for most users as they'll have a discrete GPU anyway. Taking that into account though, what you're getting here for about $220 is a processor that will offer for you six performance cores with hyper threading along with four e cores for a total of 16 threads 
And the thing is, we don't even have to wait for benchmarks to know how this thing is going to perform. Just go and take a look at recent benchmarks for a 12600K and you'll have a really good idea on where the 13400 will land. You'll get a processor that will be right up there with some of the fastest processors currently on the market when it comes to gaming. And then when it comes to multi-core performance, you'll have a CPU that's capable of trading blows with very fast 8-core 16-thread CPUs. So not only will you have a great value CPU for gaming, but if you wanted to build a very capable workstation or content creation PC without destroying the wallet, then this CPU will surely deliver. What also makes the CPU really appealing is that, ironically, since it's not unlocked, you don't necessarily need to spend a lot for a Z-series board. You can get something like this Asus Prime H670 board for about 120 US. It's basically got everything you need. Then you can pair it with some cheap 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200 kit. Those go for about $60 or so. But if you really want the CPU to stretch its legs, you can get this Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 4000 memory. You probably won't be able to run it at 4000 mega transfers with a non-K part, but this is Samsung B-Die and you can easily tune it down to like 3600 CL14. I use the same kit on my test bench and it works great. This is one of the big advantages that Intel's 13400F will have over AMD's 7600X is that you don't need to spend an exorbitant amount on the motherboard and you only have to spend a fraction of the price for decent RAM. So this is why I believe that when the 13400 and 13400F hit the market, they'll be considered the go-to CPUs for gamers and workstation users on a budget. With that said though, uh, right now, Alder Lake parts have become severely discounted ever since Raptor Lake hit the market. I guess this is due to retailers clearing out older inventory. Right now, you can find an i5-12600KF for about 220 US on Amazon, which I think is a really good price. And if you can't wait a few months and are looking for a capable CPU that won't necessarily break the bank right now, then this looks like a great option. This makes sense as it's the outgoing series, but once supply for these parts run out, then that's it. You're only going to have the 13th gen to go for or the 7000 series from AMD, but at least you've got another great alternative that's hitting the market soon. Also, taking into account previous price trends, you'll notice that a few months after release, the i5-X400 CPUs typically drop in price by around $20 to $30. Therefore, you can probably expect this 13400F to drop down to about $200 after a few months, and at that price point, it's a no-brainer. So I'm really looking forward to the release of some of Intel's upcoming non-K Raptor Lake parts. I think they'll be great options for people looking to get their hands on capable CPUs who don't do any overclocking, but still offer great value. This is what I love about having market competition. You have plenty of options available at great prices. Let's hope this competitive landscape continues going forward. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.